They've held other climate strikes here before, but never headlined by the diminutive Swedish teenager seen by many as a colossus of environmental campaigners. Before thousands, many of them children, in the centre of a rain-swept Bristol, the architect of this worldwide school strike movement took to the stage and delivered yet another trademark message of defiance. Activism works, so I'm telling you to act. We are being betrayed by those in power, and they are failing us, but we will not back down. And if you feel threatened by that, then I have some very bad news for you. We will not be silenced because we are the change and change is coming whether you like it or not. Yeah. Well, I will not stand aside and watch. I will not be silent while the world is on fire. Will you? World leaders are behaving like children. So it falls on us to be the adults in the room. One of the organizers of today's rally was 17-year-old Orla McMahon. Of course, many people question the value of taking children out of school for something like this. You know, I think um, Greta Thunberg is a two-time Nobel Prize nominee. She's spoken at the UN, and I think that for any child, getting an opportunity to hear her speak is going to be invaluable education. Thank you, and let's march. And march they did. Police estimated more than 15,000 joined in. Organizers claimed it was more like 30,000. They scrambled for a view of the star attraction, her audience finding any vantage point they could. This is monumental, I think. I think seeing this, this massive crowd of people coming together, I think it's amazing. What do you think she's doing that you like? Trying to save the planet. But not everyone in Bristol today was impressed. They can protest on Twitter, and Instagram, Facebook. They don't need to block the road, block the whole city centre. We're Channel 4 News. Load of bloody rubbish, just load of bloody rubbish. Why, why do you say that? Well, because you're not going to get nothing out of it. You won't get a thing out of it. Having Greta Thunberg lead your climate strike rally is obviously a huge coup for the organisers here. And it comes just a day after, of course, another very big moment for environmental campaigners. Namely, the Court of Appeals ruling that the decision to allow Heathrow's expansion was unlawful. Now it's thought plans for a multi-billion pound roads programme could also be challenged. It's against this, in a background of extreme weather events from flooding to fires, that many on today's march hope momentum is now with the original school striker, who's used platforms from the UN to Davos to berate world leaders over their climate credentials. People are suffering. People are dying. It really feels like the revolution is starting to happen. We've known about climate change since before I was born. The generation before mine should have been tackling it urgently. The best time was several decades ago. The second best time is right now. Greta Thunberg, her image fated in the city where today she marched and a moment of protest captured in a movement she continues to help define. Andy Davis reporting. Well, this morning we found ourselves on the same train as Greta Thunberg. So as we arrived here in Bristol, I asked her what she made of the ruling that a third runway at Heathrow Airport would be illegal as the plan did not take into account the government's commitments to tackle the climate crisis. And as you'll see, we recorded that interview on a telephone. <laughs> Right. And how important is COP26, do you think, in terms of setting realistic targets and actually implementing the Paris Accord? Well, it's ah. Do you think this government is living up to those expectations? I don't think any government is doing that. So no government, yeah. I mean, no government. 
acting in line with the carbon dioxide budget that we have on a 66% chance. Right, okay. So what would your direct appeal be to the British Prime Minister? Listen to the science. Listen to the science. Well, the subject of climate change has received added urgency thanks to the terrible flooding that will continue with the arrival of Storm Jorge. More residents in East Yorkshire have been forced to flee their homes. Emergency services have been checking on people in East Coic where the River Eyre is bursting through flood defences. Jane Dodge is there. Jane. First it was Kira, then it was Dennis, now it's Jorge. Three major storms in just one month. The wettest place today, South Wales, the Met Office says more than 100 millimetres of rain will have fallen by tomorrow morning. It says that Jorge won't be as extreme as Kira or Dennis, but that's a little comfort for people in East Cowick. Water levels here have been rising all day. There's a siege mentality here. Local businesses have donated sandbags front doors have been barricaded, but the water levels keep rising. It's a bit daunting. You've moved everything upstairs and you, it's this waiting game, uh, like whether or not you can go to work or not. If I've been at work this morning and had to come back and it's just, you can't really do anything other than help other people and put the sandbags up. But round the corner, it's too late for sandbags. It took just two hours for this road to become a river. No pedestrians venturing out now, just a couple of oil drums. Tony and Dan braved the water to check on the levels, but it wasn't good news. I think it's rising about an inch, inch an hour down there. It's gradually just working its way up to the houses. Gardens are now part of a vast lake. The river air burst its banks on Tuesday. It usually runs past East Cowick and the nearby town of Snaith. Now it's running through them. We've been abandoned. This village has been abandoned. Yesterday, myself, my friends, whose houses are now down four foot of water, were down this road with brushes and shovels trying to keep it. The emergency services never saw them till 10 o'clock last night when we were under two, three foot of water. Fire officers have been here again today, as have the local council and the environment agency. We caught up with Tony back at his home. The water has covered his lawn and is now close to his front door. If it gets in, then I'll stay upstairs. I ain't like leaving it, I'm staying here. Even if the water comes right in? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What's your reaction to what's happened today? There's nothing we can do, we can't. You can't stop this, stop the water. We'll get wherever it wants to go. Uh, back door, I think. Oh. Yeah. And that could include the village of West Cowick, a mile down the road. With water levels still rising, people there have already been warned they may have to leave their homes tonight. Evidence of those rising water levels this afternoon, you could see, still see the word road on the sign before behind me. Not anymore. Some good news, though. The Environment Agency says it has managed to replace those buckled flood defences at Bewdley and Iron Bridge. Just in time for the next onslaught, the River Severn is expected to rise again on Sunday with the possibility of more flooding.